brothers and sisters, welcome in the name of God and of our common humanity. We gather here to remember tragedy and to reaffirm our commitment to a fair and just society. On this Holocaust Day, we express our horror and revulsion at the acts of violence committed against God's ancient people, especially in the middle of the last century, events which can still be remembered by some. We confess our own shame in not voicing our feelings more positively and effectively. And we salute the bravery and courage of all who suffer so much, and yet maintain their witness to their faith, and trust in the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. We recognize that men and women are still victims of hatred and injustice throughout our world, especially on account of their race or ethnicity. May the memory of all that people suffered in the last century and continue to suffer now strengthen our efforts for peace. May the memory of those who died inspire our service to the living. May the memory of past destruction move us to build a more tolerant society in which hatred of race, color, or creed may find no place and where people of goodwill will strive for God's kingdom of justice and peace together. The words given by Jesus, but well known across the world by those of many faiths, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob. He who formed you, O Israel. Fear not that I have, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt for your ransom. Cush and Seba in your stead. I give Egypt, I, since you are precious and honoured in my sight, because I love you, I will give men in exchange for you and people in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my cup with oil, my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I now say the memorial prayer for victims of the Holocaust and other acts of genocide. I'll say the first line in Hebrew, then I'll read the English that is printed in the 
כמו לרחמים, שכם במימים, חפשים לכל נכון על קווי השכינה, ומה לא הספידי שמותי מזוהרו כי המזהירים, אז נשמע איס חללי השואה. O Lord, who are full of compassion, remember the victims who perished in the Holocaust who have gone to their eternal rest, together with victims of other acts of genocide since the Second World War. We beseech you, O Lord, shelter their souls forevermore in your divine presence, and let their souls be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Amen. Mother Mayor, religious and civic dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. Can I also uh, echo the words of my colleagues and thank everybody for coming here on this rather wet uh, afternoon here in East Lancashire. I must tell you that um, before we set off, I looked at my BBC weather app and it told me there was an 8% chance of rain in Burnley at midday. But coming as I do from Salford, we don't worry too much about rain. But thank you all for coming. Um, as you know, I've been coming now for several years. Lost count of how many, I'm not... One of the, not the one for statistics and so on, but it's always a pleasure to come, although obviously the event itself is not a pleasurable event, it's a solemn occasion. Every year Holocaust Memorial Day has a theme. This year the theme is ordinary people. Ordinary people encompasses the perpetrators, the victims, those who sadly stood by, and indeed many heroes. The perpetrators, not just in the Holocaust, but in other acts of genocide, such as in Cambodia, Darfur, Rwanda, Bosnia. The perpetrators were ordinary people very often. Secretaries who perhaps recorded what was going on. Doctors and nurses and dentists, particularly in the Holocaust, who helped select people for the death camps or if they thought they were fit to work they selected them for work. Many of the survivors were those who were selected to work because perhaps they were younger and fitter. Which was often done by, as I say, doctors, dentists, medical people. My own aunt was experimented on by the infamous Dr. Joseph Mengele Thankfully she survived, but after the Holocaust, she settled in Australia as it happens, she got married and she was never able to have children because of the experiments that uh, the evil Dr. Mengele had performed on her. Ordinary people, the victims. I've heard many stories of Holocaust survivors and I'm particularly interested to hear, not just of the awful way in which they were treated and what happened to them during the Holocaust. I'm interested to hear how they rebuilt their lives afterwards and you wouldn't know they were Holocaust survivors because they blended into society like ordinary people. And I'm particularly interested to hear their stories before the Holocaust, how they had a normal upbringing, normal schooling, and literally were friends with some of the people who were eventually to go on and, and, and cause such, such genocide and so on. And we know particularly in places such as Rwanda, I heard the other day in my own uh, local commemoration in Salford, we heard from a victim of the genocide in Rwanda. Obviously she wasn't a victim in the fact that she, she survived, but her father didn't and many members of her family didn't and she lived through it. And she said it was the very people they went to school with, her, their neighbours, that were the people that perpetrated these crimes. And sadly many other people weren't so involved but they stood by. Whether they were locals or from afar or international people. But there were also many heroes as well. 
heroes such as Leon Bouchard, Marcel Huffman, train drivers who refused to drive the trains to the to the death camps, people who hid Jewish people and others, like the famous story of Anne Frank, who was hidden. Many, many people were called hidden children, etc. So there were many heroes who were ordinary people, just did extraordinary things. And this is what we commemorate on this Holocaust Memorial Day. Interestingly, in our synagogues yesterday, we actually read the story of the Exodus. We read different portions every week of the, uh, well, what we call the Pentateuch. And yesterday just happened to be the story of the Exodus. And I was thinking that in many ways, the slavery in Egypt was also a sort of Holocaust, an act of genocide. Thankfully, it had a happy ending for the children of Israel, a miraculous ending. We don't have 10 plagues these days. But still, we trust in the Almighty that evil will be conquered and good and goodness will prevail. That each and every one of us has a duty to play, and a part to play, in ensuring that indeed goodness will prevail. And as, of course, we believe throughout religions, ultimately, that the kingdom of God will prevail. A reading from the Holy Quran. Salam and greetings of peace. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. In the name of God the Merciful, the Compassionate. Praise be to the Lord of the Universe, who has created us and made us tribes and nations, that we might know each other. If the enemy inclines towards peace, do thou also incline towards peace and trust in God for the Lord is the one that hears and knows all things and the servants of God most gracious are those who walk on the earth in humility and when we address them we say peace Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them indeed Allah loves those who act justly Good afternoon everyone It's nearly 80 years since the events of the Holocaust and soon there will be no first hand survivors left to tell us about their experiences. That's why it's so important that we're here today and we pass on these stories and the experiences so that it stays in our collective memory. We have an obligation and a necessity even, I think, for teaching future generations about the Holocaust and other genocides and emphasising the importance of mutual tolerance and respect amongst people forever we are. This year's theme, Ordinary People, couldn't be more important. Um, you know, echoing some of the words from the rabbi lab, there, when I've spoken to Holocaust survivors before, it's that, it's that thing that ordinary people, um, perpetrators and bystanders, and were sort of one neighbours and um, shop workers, people that have known each other for years, railway workers, um, bureaucrats, architects these ordinary people that were, were sort of involved in these awful events. I think the important thing to remember is that people were very good to do extraordinary and remarkable things and stood up um, in the face of evil uh, against this thing, one of the, one of the most awful things of history. By remembering these events, we can make sure that our experiences are a meaningful part of our future. I'd just like to read it then. Today, memorial prayer by written by a member of the Jewish resistance in Burma. We shall remember the day, the day in its noon, the sun that rose over the stake of blood, the skies that stood high and silent. We shall remember the mounds of ash beneath flowering pods. Let the living remember the dead, for behold, they are here, before us, 
They pulled her eyes, cast her round and about. They saw let us not rest, and may our lives be worthy of her memory. Let us remember the prayers we paid to preserve our freedoms and learn from the words of Pastor Naumola, a victim of the Nazis in Germany. He wrote, At first they came to the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came to the communists, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came to the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for me but there was no one left to speak for me. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to slightly deviate from the written service. Mark Woodward spoke those words most eloquently and I would like you all to join with me in repeating the pledge. We shall remember the day the day in its noon, the sun that rose over the state of blood, the skies that stood high and silent. We shall remember the mounds of ash beneath flowering gardens. The living shall remember their dead. But behold, they are here before us. Behold, as their eyes stare around and about, let us not be silent until our lives are worthy of their memory.